Well, the Albanese government could be forced to pay out tens of millions of dollars in compensation after the High Court's controversial decision to outlaw indefinite detention. Solicitor General Stephen Donoghue is warning the scrapping of the policy that saw dozens of criminals detained indefinitely would open the door to undefendable damages claims, quote unquote. Let's bring in my panel now, commentator Jason Morrison and Liberal Senator for New South Wales, Holly Hughes. Uh, Holly, I would have thought, I'm not a lawyer, but I would have thought that mm. given the government at the time was operating under uh, an interpretation of the law that was mm. given, you know, granted by the High Court some 20 years ago and that there'd been no challenge to it yeah. to this point, um, that they were operating within the law and they would have a defendable case and that these people shouldn't be paid out. Yeah, look, I'm not a lawyer either, so I'm not going to weigh in on, on the legalities of that. But what I think is the most extraordinary thing about this whole saga is the government has literally been caught asleep at the wheel. Hmm. Whilst this High Court challenge was going on, you know, at the very least, at the very least, this government should have been preparing for this finding so that they were ready, should this happen, uh, to make, you know, have legislation ready to go so that it could be combated very, very quickly. Uh, and what we've seen over the last week is just an absolute schmozzle. Uh, we were told in the Senate last week by Minister Watt that no one was going to be released until they had the reasons from the, for the High Court's decision. Mm, They're which not we don't due have. to be released until February. Well, then the next day, Minister Watt came in and said, well, um, actually, no, we're doing it now. And there's, you know, so many that are being let out. We now know that it's around 93, uh, but that number could actually skyrocket. It, it could be considerably higher. And these people are now out in the community. No one really knows where they are, what they're doing. Uh, and these are people who've already been found guilty of some very heinous crimes. Uh, yet, apparently, they have more rights than Australian citizens when it comes to, to freedom in the community. Well, oh, you would have heard, Jason, my interview with Caleb Runciman before from <clears throat> the West Australian, who spent the night at one of these motels where these people are being kept, quote-unquote, and there is no control at all. It's, it's just extraordinary. But the, the insulting yeah. cherry on top would be if these people then got compensation out of the government mm. for the fact that they were locked up. There's always a lawyer circling, isn't there? Oh, yeah. And, and the only reason we're in this predicament... Actually, there's two reasons. One, crap laws. Mm. Crap laws passed by unworldly people in Parliament and bad advisers telling them to pass crap laws. That's the only reason we're here. If this had been a reasonably uh, debated and reasonably apportioned law, the High Court wouldn't have had a chance to blow a hole in the side of it. They did it very quickly. So there's your point one. Point two is the only reason a rapist was able to take that action is because there was the typical lawyer out there, the activist <clears throat> lawyer circling, the same one that's putting around today that there could be tens of millions. Mm. I'll give you the tip. There'll be no compensation. Mm. These people will be lucky if they are here in six months. Uh, but there'll be a tribunal somewhere that will mm. find some, some ability to be able to extend them. But you ask where they are. I mean, you had the, the West Australian talking about it. Rob Avadia from Channel 7 News found them at a motel somewhere around near Bankstown the other day. Uh, and there's another group in Canberra. And uh, why are they not being held and detained? Because they can't be detained. Mm -hmm. Because our parliament passed crap laws and the High Court did its job and, and this is the thing that's hard to stomach, but the High Court did its job here. Yeah. It actually said, I'm sorry, you can't double punish yeah. someone. Yeah. Now, if there's a room full of people, and, and Holly, that includes many of your colleagues, if they can't come to terms with the fact that that's our system, mm. then I just wonder what games are going on in Parliament at the real job, the real job being to actually to legislate the right outcomes Correct. for the protection of Australians. Correct. And, and I think what you saw yeah. out of the I mean, government today was... I mean, as Caleb makes the point, though, ordinary. these laws have been in place for 20 years. They're Doesn't not, matter. You know, this Doesn't isn't a matter. change of law. Law. It's Doesn't been matter in place how long. for 20 years. Um, but I'm worried that the laws uh, that are being put through tonight, uh, that have been devised by the Labor government in an awful rush, that we mm. were only given two hours this morning in a briefing on them, that, you know, they will not... Uh, be up to up to the strength that they need to be. Uh, certainly, uh, Peter Dutton and, and the team around him put forward some amendments. Uh, I'm here. The debate's just restarted in the Senate, so I'm not a you know I'm not uh, 
right on the pace because it just started at 5.30 again uh, to where those amendments are up to. I understand there might be some agreement with all of our amendments, which would at least give a provision that if the, the, uh, these people breach one of the visa conditions that are going to be put on them, that they actually that then can be detained. They can be put into jail. Uh, but that was something that, you know, was unenforceable until some of these amendments were put but forward. My, my point is, Holly, and not to harp on on this, but, you know, I mean, you're sitting up here talking to us tonight, which is good, and this debate, a crucial debate for the protection of Australians, is going on in the Parliament. And I just wonder how many of your colleagues and those on the other side of the room will actually be getting the advice and getting the legal advice or just party voting down lines, which is how we've ended up with crap legislation in the first place. I mean, you know, frankly, yeah, well, we, we, we pay parliamentarians. So no, no, but you have a vote in this. You have a vote in this. And, yeah. and so did the opposition. No, absolutely, we do. And so did the government before. Mm. And it's really easy to say, oh, well, you know, the Albanese government didn't do a thing. I agree with you. They would have had holding positions ready to go on this for the public relations battle, but they weren't ready to go on mm. this for the protection of Australians battle. Mm. This is crucial stuff, and we've got to make sure that the job is done by all sides on this, not just by well, one side. Well, the Greens side. will vote against it. The Greens are more oh, concerned well. with these people having freedom <laughs> than the protection of Australian citizens. We these saw, people literally yeah. live in fairyland with unicorns. Like, we, it's we, just... Yeah, Nick McKim, yeah. Nick McKim yeah. today described it oh. as, as, as Albanese's tamper moment, which is just extraordinary. And then we saw, you know, double jeopardy. Mate, let them live in your house. Yeah, if, they're vaudeville actors. Absolutely. Just extraordinary. Now,